Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another PC how-to video for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm gonna be showing you how to install the very popular Noctua NH-U12S on the AMD AM4 platform. Now to be clear, the NH-U12S has been around in a number of different versions over the years. The original U12 actually was released in 2005, if you can believe that. The U12S, the beige version, was released in 2013 and this model that I have here was released in 2019. This is the Chromax Black Edition. Now, the U12S and then the U12S Chromax Black are identical in terms of performance as well as in terms of the way you install them. So this does cover both of those coolers. Doesn't matter what color it is. There is one caveat though, and that is that if you purchased or received a U12S secondhand, that was manufactured before 2018 or so, it won't have the AM4 bracket in the box. That's because, of course, AM4 didn't exist before 2017, and the cooler was released in 2013, but also because initially Noctua released a special version of the U12S called the AM4 Special Edition, or SE, and that one was what you had to buy if you wanted to mount it on an AM4 motherboard. I think this is probably because Noctua, like a lot of other cooler manufacturers out there, didn't know how successful AM4 would be. And so they released a special SKU. They didn't repackage their existing SKUs. This, of course, did change over time. And now every Noctua cooler you buy today, new off a retail shelf, will have an AM4 bracket. But if you bought one used, or if you've had one for a long time, maybe running on an Intel system, you better check the box to make sure you have the AM4 bracket. If you don't, you can actually contact Noctua to get a free update for your cooler. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and show you how to install the NH-U12S on the AM4 platform. Here's my Ryzen system ready for cooler installation. Now this is the cooler itself. Note that of course, you'll need to take that plastic cover off before you install it. It's there to protect the metal surface. Then we also have the fan. The fan clips are actually pre-attached from the factory. And there's another set in the box in case you want to add a second fan. Here's the tube of NTH1 that you'll get in the box as well. Here are the brackets. These are specifically AM3 and AM4 brackets. I'll show you a close-up of those in a moment. Here are the gray spacers you'll be using if you have an AM4 motherboard. And here are the four screws. Those go into this motherboard backplate, and that comes with your motherboard. Don't be confused. Some people are scared when they don't see it in the box with the cooler. It is actually part of your motherboard package. And here I'm going to insert it through the back of the motherboard, and you'll see that the four posts will be visible through the holes there. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you sort of need to hold it in place and almost have three hands. Notice what happens when I put this in place and then go to grab my screw. Down it goes, I lose everything, and the bracket falls out of the back. The best thing to do is actually put the screw through this AM4 bracket. But let me give you a closer look at this so you know where to put the screw. You'll see, first of all, it does say this side up, which is helpful, and it has numbers, 3 and 4, which do correspond to AM3 and AM4. So, of course, I'm going to use AM4 here. I'll insert the screw through that hole. Then I'll put the spacer on that screw, and now I can attach it to the motherboard back plate. Because I do have my motherboard up right here, I have one hand behind it and one hand in front, and that makes it pretty easy. Another option you have is you can tape the motherboard backplate to the back of the motherboard if you want to put it down on a table and don't have access to the back. Now I have hand tightened the screws on one of the brackets, and I'll go ahead and put the other bracket on the left side here. Note that at this point, I'm just hand tightening all of the screws. Once they're all in place, I will come through with my screwdriver and tighten it up. This actually makes it easier because once you have the screwdriver in your hand, you lose one of the hands that you need to keep things in place. So here again, everything's loose, but that's okay. I'm gonna carefully tighten it up, making sure that the motherboard backplate does come through the holes and doesn't get jammed against the back of the motherboard. And now it's time to install this heatsink. Here you can see I've removed that plastic cover off of the heatsink transfer plate. But don't forget, you need thermal paste. And here I have put my system down on its side on the bench so I can easily apply this. And note that I'm using more than a piece-sized application here. That old adage really only applies to Intel CPUs and AM4 processors about twice the surface area. So you really do need this much. And later on in this video, I'll show you that it looks perfect when I remove the heatsink. Now I will lower it into place 
There are two screw holes that you need to line up with the two posts you see there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then I go back and forth, tighten the screw on this side and then on the back side. You want to make sure you equalize the pressure and don't just tighten one screw all the way down. So you can see me jumping back and forth between the two screws here. You should be doing exactly the same thing. One really nice thing about the screws that Noctua uses is that they are spring loaded. So they'll give you tactile feedback when they are tight. You won't be able to screw them down anymore. So they're really easy to use. You can't over tighten them. Now I'll lower the fan into position and note that this is a little bit harder because my video card is in place. If you need a little bit more space, definitely go ahead and remove that from your system. The clips are easy to use if you have access to them. And I'm going to show you another angle here. Note that I'm using a full-size ATX case here. If you have a smaller case, you may not be able to get your hand in to access that fan clip, in which case you'll want to install this outside of your system. Here's the four-pin fan cable that attaches to your CPU header on your motherboard. I'm going to show that to you here. There may be a few and you'll need to look at the labels on your motherboard or perhaps in your manual to know which one to attach it to. Once it's connected, you can tuck away the cable and you're done. But I do suggest you take a closer look at the fan once it's installed to make sure it's even across both sides, then make any necessary adjustments. And here's the completed installation. Plenty of space to install four RAM sticks if you have them. Also plenty of space around the GPU, which is nice. Plus the Chromax black finish looks great and will accentuate any PC build. As promised, I'm going to give you a look at the thermal paste after I remove the cooler. You can see it's evenly spread across the CPU's heat spreader without going over the edge all that much. And then we have it evenly spread on the CPU's cooling plate as well. Note that it's nearly the same size as the AM4 processor. Now, if you have any questions about this video, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you next time.